Belgium money, yeah. Euro was launched in a, I suppose, in the spirit of huge celebration. Looking back now, what we didn't realise at the time was that while well, this was a big political step forward, uh, there were the seeds being sown of some big economic problems in trying to uh, introduce a single currency in a group of countries which were economically very different. The economic flaws in the design were swept aside by a positive political movement which was an anti-nationalist movement. It tended to swamp and overwhelm concerns about the underlying economic design of the system. Those design flaws were supposed to be tackled by mechanisms such as the Stability and Growth Pact and by giving the European Central Bank an unusually narrow role. The ECB was prevented from becoming a money machine financing profligate members by having a very restrictive mandate. So these corrections essentially were like tying, uh, tying the hands of the system and saying, you will not inflate, you will not print money. But then when we needed money to be added to the system, we, we had eliminated the ability to do that. After months of firefighting to stop the problems of the periphery from spreading to the core European economies, the events of recent days have sent fresh shudders through an already badly shaken system. This problem started a couple of years ago in the periphery. Investors were asking questions about Greece, Ireland and Portugal. What's changed this week and the last few weeks is it started to move towards the core of Europe. It went into Italy and Spain, this week into France and particularly Germany, which had trouble raising some money. And investors are now asking, if Germany is going to have to pick up the bill for all this, uh, shouldn't we be looking for a higher interest rate to lend money to Germany? And how is this all going to work out? They're effectively asking, can, a few, can Europe now afford to bail itself out? I think the wobble in the German bond market yesterday is a one-day story, but maybe it's a good news. It'll wake up the Germans and get them to realize that they're, trouble, they're going to be affected by this crisis as well. And it might make the Germans join the party and realize it's time that the ECB is relaxed in its mandate and given a broader mandate, like other central banks, allowing the ECB to buy up bonds more aggressively. The only way to calm the markets uh, is for the ECB to become much more active in, in intervening. Uh, if Germany isn't prepared to give the green light for that, uh, then you have to ask, well, is the ECB going to go ahead and do it anyway? And are we looking at some huge diplomatic row between the ECB and Germany, between France and Germany? The Germans believe that allowing the European Central Bank to act as a lender of last resort and stand behind troubled Eurozone economies could lead to rampant inflation. And the German race memory of the dangers of hyperinflation, a disaster that engulfed the German economy twice in the last century, is a powerful barrier to movement in this regard. Following a mini-summit in Strasbourg today with the French President and the new Italian Premier, it was clear that Angela Merkel is still not returning. The French President has said that the European Central Bank is independent and so that any possible treaty modifications do not concern the European Central Bank. Ultimately, they agreed to disagree and announced plans to press ahead with greater fiscal union among the member countries of the Eurozone. But most commentators now believe they are fast running out of time. Be careful. Be careful. The nature of brinkmanship is that it brings you close to the brink. Uh, and politics only moves at a certain speed. And the markets are moving at a much faster speed. And the longer the politicians don't sort this out, the bigger the risk of a serious accident in the markets. Very hard to forecast where that might emerge. Uh, but there's no doubt that the European financial system and the euro itself ultimately uh, are facing a very serious and fundamental threat. If we keep the euro system as it is now, there really is simply too much inflexibility in the system. The current system really could collapse.